The PIC32 has many digital input and output pins arranged into ports A through G. Of these, ports B and D have a full 16 pins numbered 0 to 15, while the other ports have fewer than 16 pins. Also, port B can be used as an analog input port. It's up to us to decide whether we want to use those pins as analog inputs or digital input outputs. To control that, we use a special function register called AD1 pin configuration, or PCFG. AD1 refers to analog to digital converter 1. There's only one on our PIC32. And for each pin of port B, if there is a 1 there, then it's treated like a digital pin. And if it's a 0, then it's treated like an analog input. So if we give it this command, 0x, f, 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 this is configuring bits 0 to 15, corresponding to pin 0 to 15, all as 1s, meaning that these are all digital I.O. pins. If we made them all equal to zero, then they would all be analog inputs. OK, so we're going to assume digital input outputs for the purposes of this video. Now, if we want to control whether that pin is an input or an output, we use the special function register TRIS, A, B, C, D, or F, up whatever your port is. Let's assume we're looking at port D. So if we say TRIS D bits dot tris d um, eight, for example. If we set that equal to a one, then that pin is an input. And if we set it equal to a zero, then that pin's an output. Okay. All right, so this makes pin eight of that 16 pin port a digital input or a digital output. So for example, uh, let's assume that we've made it an input. Then we can use port d bits dot rd8. Calling this will give us the value of pin 8. So we can say, unsigned integer in variable in is equal to that. And if it's a 1, that means the input value is close to 3.3 volts. And if it's a 0, that means the input value is close to 0 volts. Or we could read the entire port at once by just saying in is equal to port d. And that will give us an unsigned integer that has the values of zeros and ones corresponding to low voltage or high voltage on all 16 pins of port D. If they're output pins, so if we have it configured as an output, we can write to lat D. And if we write lat D is equal to 0x f f 0 0, for example, then this means that pins 0 through 7 have a 0 output or a low voltage, 0 volts. And this means pins uh, 8 through 15 have a high or 1 output, so close to 3.3 volts. Now, if we're using a digital output, we also have one more option. We can configure it as an open drain output. Open drain outputs. And the way we do that, if we want to configure, say, pin 8 of port D as open drain, we would say, ODC port D bits dot ODC D8 is equal to 1. And this makes now pin 8 an open drain output. Um, and then if it's a 0, then it's, it's a typical buffered output. So that's where the output is forced to be either 0 volts or 3.3 volts. Now, if it's open drain, then If we write with lat d a value of, so this, this case, lat d bits dot lat d 8 is equal to 1, then that means the output 
floats, and we'll explain that in just a moment. And zero means the output is equal to zero volts. Okay, so let's explain now what open drain means. Open drain means that if this is the pick here, and here's the output, so we'll call this RD8, then internally it's configured as a switch to ground. So that means if we write a zero to this open drain output, then we close the switch and the output is going to be ground. But we can also, if we leave it open, then it just floats. We're not assigning a particular vol voltage there, it's just floating. So if at the output we connected a resistor up to 3.3 volts, then uh, when we write a one here, uh, when we write a zero, it's going to pull it down to ground. When we write a one, it's going to be just sitting there at 3.3 volts. So the nice thing about this is I don't have to use 3.3 volts. For certain pins, I can use a higher voltage, like 5 volts. And now this way, our pick, which only is powered by 3.3 volts, can create a 5 volt output. 